So where do you think the current meta of Final Fantasy is now? Sure. Um, as far as the meta goes right now, it's really dependent on where you are in the world. Um, the North American Championship, um, I kind of expected to see a lot of water and wind water, and, and we all saw a lot of that, I think, throughout uh, both day one and day two. That was the, the largest portion of the meta was uh, those two decks specifically. Of course, we had a number of other good decks, uh, Earth, Earth decks, Lightning decks, um, and they all did a really good job. Um, but for the American meta right now, definitely water and wind water, but that was at the North American Championship. And uh, since then, we've definitely evolved um, the way that we're building our decks, and we are expanding all over the place, especially um, once we figured out what that top eight was. We had uh, Arvin's deck, which is crazy. Uh, we had the Gilgabez deck from uh, Josh, and that was great, too. Um, so we had a lot of really interesting decks in there, and I think that really uh, encouraged people to think outside the box a little bit with the meta. We didn't have to be stuck on the mono waters and the wind waters in the meta to, to do well. But that's just in America. Um, I mean, in Europe, we have a ton of great decks, and I think uh, we have some uh, big X depth following in, <laughs> in Europe, and it's really great that way. Um, but a lot of other ice decks, uh, ice earth decks, uh, ice lightning decks, lightning <laughs> decks. Um, Europe has a really interesting uh, meta, and it's, it's a lot different from the one in the US. So having to follow that and the US is really fun, and it's interesting to see how all of them have developed differently. And last but not least, we have Japan. And uh, the joke that I have with everyone at my local stores and the folks I talk to online is I don't think any Japanese players start playing a game until they have at least like three or four backups on the field, and then, then they actually start playing Final Fantasy. Uh, so it's, it's different, um, but I, it's every time it's flawless, like backup, 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 um, perfect curve, um, and they play it really well, so it's fun to watch, but I think... I think between the U.S. and Europe, uh, we're definitely a little more aggro than they are. So um, looking forward to, to the world's meta, that's going to be a little bit different, though. We'll talk about that later. So that being said, with so many great decks out there, is there any one deck that you could go, hey, that's the best deck in the meta right now? The best thing about uh, Final Fantasy TCG is that uh, we don't have uh, a tier, tier zero top deck uh, that is the deck that beat. Um, a, a lot of other card games um, have had metas where that's what it is. It evolved into you're playing this deck um, and you're winning, or maybe you're playing a deck that counters that deck because you know you have to play to that one. Um, I'm trying to think back to uh, Magic during the days of Cobblade, where everyone was playing that deck or a variation of that deck with different spice. Maybe you were playing uh, a splash of red for lightning bolts or something, or maybe you dipped into black for a different piece of removal. Um, but that was the deck, and it, if you weren't playing that deck, you weren't winning. Final Fantasy, at least right now, it's, it's not that way. Uh, you can play any element uh, in this game, and there's going to be a deck for you. Uh, if you want to play fire, uh, there's a ton of great fire cards right now. Uh, Emperor's Andy, uh, the 3 CP VV, but those are great cards. Earth, uh, we have the Legend Vincent. Uh, I mean, water, don't even get me started. There's a ton of stuff. Uh, but there is no best deck right now, and it's part of the reason why this game is so great. So with all the different decks and the meta being what it is, are there advantages in deck building, uh, say, meta versus off-meta decks? Sure. Um, meta versus off-meta. I think the best thing really is to play what you're most comfortable with and what you have the most experience playing. Um, knowing your deck is the most important part. Um, and if you have a firm understanding of the meta, definitely uh, you can play off meta. If you're a newer player trying to get into the game and you just want to see what other players are playing and um, solid decks that are going around, definitely stay on meta. Um, it's, I, I don't encourage one or the other specifically, but 
what I do encourage is a firm understanding in the meta before you try building those off-meta decks, uh, in a competitive environment at least. Uh, if you're playing Among Friends, I encourage you to play everything. Um, even playing the starters right out of the box is a, a ton of fun, but uh, in a competitive scene, study the meta first, play the meta first, and then go from there uh, if you want to be successful. So what are you looking forward to the most? Um, well, that's the wrong question. Just start to edit over. that out. Yep. Um, what do you think of the format of the competitive play at Worlds? So uh, we talked about the meta um, all over the world at this point, um, on meta decks, off meta decks, um, and that. But the format at Worlds, the three deck format, is uh, a different beast entirely. Um, so to, to go into the format at Worlds a little bit, uh, each competitor has to bring three decks, and among those decks, you can play any combination of elements or whatever, but for you can't repeat the same set of cards uh, in separate decks. So if I want to play an ice deck and I want to play Genesis, I can, and I want to play three in that deck, those are the, that's the only deck that's going to have Genesis at that point. So on my other two decks, even if I want to put ice into those, I'm, I'm done with Genesis. Um, I could have three ice decks and put one in each, but you only get those copies, those, that play set of cards for the three decks. So that being said, <laughs> there, there's a lot of facets to it that's going to make it it's going to make it really interesting to watch and play it. Um, because we have to not only know what decks are good, what cards are good, but we are playing with a little bit more of a limited pool. So any competitor that won at maybe their national tournaments or regional tournaments, and they have their one deck that they're very familiar, familiar with and really good with, they only get to play that in one game of the match. So maybe they're really comfortable with ice, so they play their ice deck game one, but they still have to go through at least one more game to try and get that match. So it's really going to test every player at the event, both their deck building skills, their knowledge of cards, and kind of seeing their skill level of being able to predict what their opponents are going to play. It's a different meta entirely. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how the top players in the world are going to adapt to that. So a um, lot of different facets to it. Very skill intensive for sure. With such a highlight on deck building and building three unique decks, how many decks did you build trying to find your three? Um, since I think the day that the North American Championship finished, um, when I was in the airport in Los Angeles um, and before I went to Las Vegas, um, in my mind and in my notebook and in my phone, I think I made it a goal to build at least one deck a day since then, um, but I try and build around three to four decks a day, um, and that's been every day since um, since the North American Championships ended. So um, it's a regular thing for me to analyze decks and build decks. Of course, it's changed a little bit uh, since the championship and after the format of Worlds was announced. Um, I kind of kicked in the high gear, and I think I build about um, maybe closer to seven or eight a day, um, <laughs> and it's uh, it's a little ridiculous, um, but I think it's important um, for my deck building skills and my card knowledge that I that I build these decks. Uh, I think I've used every card in the game at this point. Uh, really obscure ones. Uh, I try and build decks decks with on purpose to make. It, make them as competitive as possible. Um, even if I'm not going to play those decks or I don't plan on playing those decks at World, um, I know the cards now um, and I know different ways that they can be utilized or the best ways that at least I could come up, come up with uh, that they can be utilized. Um, and that's just deck building. Um, I only pick the, the creme de la creme of the decks that I feel the most comfortable with to play with. Uh, bring to my locals and test out with uh, our, our folks here in Milwaukee. And um, that's usually when I pick a deck, I just try and jam as many games as possible with that one single deck. So I'm not really happy with a deck until I played about like 20 games at least with it. Um, and probably goldfish it for, I want to say, probably 
at least a hundred starting hands, um, I'll sit and I'll just goldfish the deck over and over and over again and find my lines of play before I'm comfortable with them. What are you looking forward to the most going to Worlds? Um, I'm really excited to meet all the other players from across the world. Um, we have a growing uh, fan base uh, and player base that I'm excited to meet uh, the top guys from everywhere else in the world, uh, from all over Europe. Uh, from Japan and uh, meet with all of the games creators again. And uh, that's going to be a blast. Um, going to Tokyo has obviously been a, a dream of mine since I was in high school. Um, so I'm really happy to get that uh, off my bucket list and uh, see the city and tour the city. Um, so uh, that, that alone for me is huge. Um, in, the, in the top eight of the North American Championship, uh, the first round of top eight was probably the most tense moment in that whole tournament because after that first round we knew the top four were going to be the ones who were going to Japan so that was pretty much the goal of all of us in the top eight was to make it to Worlds and uh, obviously try and become the world champion so um, competing is going to be a blast, seeing the city is going to be a blast and meeting all the folks um, I'm really looking forward to it and finally the question everybody's asking have you decided what decks you're going to play? Um, I've decided two of my decks, uh, of the three decks. Uh, my third deck is, um, going to be something interesting, um, and it's probably going to be something that, uh, no one, <laughs> uh, would have seen coming. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to top what I did at the North American Championship and surprise everyone there, but, uh, I definitely want to raise eyebrows, so, uh, look forward to it. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.